what you're ultimately trying to do is create stories that will enlighten and entertain an audience and move them and make them realize something about their own lives. I'm in love. I don't think you need to change anything. I think you are perfect the way you are. She's, she's beautiful. I think I'm going to, um, with my business partner, have a little flirtation. Just come back to me. Sit, Duffy. I intend to ask for her hand in marriage. I'm in love with Gus Pike. But Gus isn't real. Who is this? Where are you calling from? The call came from Charleston, South Carolina. If Gus is alive, it changes everything. I want to go to England. England? I had an offer to go there and to teach. Well, Jasper and I always said we'd have a house full of children, but well, it doesn't seem as though Providence has that in store for us. You, you can't bring a baby to work. I got no place else to go. Please care for my baby girl. I think it's Providence you do because she wants a family and I know you'll give her all the love in the world. The world is changing and nobody is going to stop it. And progress is like a train. And I say, we get on board. Only on film have I played one um, sort of outlandish woman, and that would be in Bullets Over Broadway. Woody's the only one who would, who would let me do anything outrageous. And this character, I don't know, she does remind me of a George Bernard Shaw play. And it's, it's really a, a wonderful opportunity to be outlandish in a period way. I was scared to do television because having just worked in features, you know, they go very slowly and I thought I'll never be able to do this and now I feel quite comfortable. Young man, I have no intention of checking out at this moment. I'm afraid, Miss Hepworth, you have no choice. Zachary Bennett is like a young Jimmy Stewart. I mean, these people are enormously talented. When actors in the business in Los Angeles see this show, they're blown away by the quality. You're drawn to it. You want to you wanna be a part of it. You know, when something is that good, you want to be a part of it. Lock Loman. Have you ever considered Broadway? His voice is the one thing that has inspired me to write, and I want to take him back to New York. Sing our stuff for Ziegfeld. The going rate plus 50% is the least my client could consider. Felix, I am your father, not your client. And it's just a beautiful, well-crafted, well-written, well-acted show that, you know, I'm in love with all those characters. I'm just devastated that it's ending. To have Avonlea end for me is I'm completely stricken on one level. It brings tears to my eyes because I know it's going to be so hard to say goodbye to all these people. Everybody around the world has said, why is this the last season of Avonlea? Why wouldn't you just let the show continue on? All good things come to an end, and I feel that it's reached its zenith, and now it's time for the show to just very nicely, with lots of hoopla, finish, and hopefully maintain very fond memories in people's minds as to what it was. We continue to produce new series, and I'm working on another new show right at the moment, so audiences may embrace that as a new concept. From the producers of Road to Avonlea comes this heartwarming new series, Wind at My Back. We pop. I'll work long hours. Oh, you know, I... They took my kids. If I don't get a job, I can't get them back. We can improve things, I'm honey, telling you. Honey. We can let me go, Jack. Let me. Don't you dare walk away from me. Hey, 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 Jack, what's going on? Nobody stiffs Joe H. Callahan. You're gonna pay me last month's rent if you value your life, deadbeat. The goal of this series is to try and entertain an audience in an unsuspecting way, in a style of entertainment that's quite real, that has a little bit of edge to it. Son of a beehive court syrup label! I refuse to make a spectacle of myself in the street. No one else's mom screams at the top of her lungs in the street. There are stories that make you laugh, make you cry, and hopefully enlighten you at the end of the day. So I'm gonna tell the cops. When I first read the scripts, I, I loved them. I absolutely loved them because, you know, you fall in love with these people and you care about them. You're leaving us? I have to go back to Northbridge to get a job. I hate you! Hop! Don't! Hop! 
you know, she's fiercely independent, but at the same time, she's, you know, she's devoted to her kids and family. You killed my son. You heartless bitch. It may take place in the 30s, but I think there are a lot of similarities these days uh, to what was happening then. I think people are going to really relate to what's happening. They're going to see themselves in these characters. Come here now! Winded My Back is the dramatic story of a family torn apart during the Great Depression. A widowed mother and her three children try desperately to find a way to maintain their independence and pride through adversity and hard times. Your brother's hurt. Leave her alone! Leave him alone! I won't tell please. Ah! See nothing, you hear me? Get out of here! These subjects, love and family and hope and and survival and all those things, these are timeless. I got it! Joe, I got the job! Hey, that's terrific! <laughs> In each script, you know, I laughed, I cried. I mean, all those emotions. Uh, came over me. The lives of the Baileys provide the backdrop for stories of family bonds and the poignancy of love. Sometimes funny and awkward, sometimes full of pain. In a world where hope is just around the corner.